dress down to from your below your knees and down. You wear that thing that is not snug to your body. Because you want to attract the man that's going to view you as that righteous woman that you want to be treated as. Right. You want to be called a wife, right. not a baby mama. The one verse 14. Here we go now. This is your question, right? His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says his head and his hairs was white like wool. Jesus Christ's head and hairs were white like like wool. Right. That's right. The image that we have of Jesus Christ now, do we see that in our churches? No. A Christ with hair white like wool. Bring it out. Do we see that? What about you, Timothy? What image do we see in our churches? Point to the one that we see. Or point to the Jesus Christ that you see there. Listen, you want me to talk? Finish reading. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says his head and his hairs were white like wool. The hairs on his beard were white and they were woolly texture. Read. As white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. It says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. You had a question about those red eyes too. You said, why are his eyes red, right? Yeah, I said, why is eyes red? Right. Give me Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. I I what I Genesis chapter 49. Verse 12. This is, this is why Christ's eyes are red in the picture that we have depicted of Jesus Christ. Read. Bring it out. His eyes shall be red with wine. Read it again. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes so shall wine. be red with wine. Because Christ drank wine in moderation. So, I can sip my wine so right go back to read verse 14. Oh. Revelation I, chapter 1. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So right now, the depiction of Jesus Christ that we have is someone with woolly hair and it was white as snow. Read. No, no. As white as snow. Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. They were red with wine. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now, here's, a, here's a good part. He says, and his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. The images of Jesus Christ that we get today, it does not show a man who has feet the color of fine brass. Right. But it goes deeper than that. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. What happens to that brass? How you doing, sis? You should come up today, man. We're here for you. All right. What do you do? What happens to that brass? It turns dark brown. That's right. Jesus Christ was a dark brown skinned man. Read, read his feet again. And his feet like unto fine brass. Let me ask you a question. The color of your feet, is that the same color as your face? So knowing the color of Christ's feet means that you know the color of Christ. Right. Christ is a so-called black man. Right. That image is not given to our people today, though. Yeah. Why? Because he wants you to, to, to worship the image of themselves. He wants our women to hate themselves to the point where they put poison in their hair. You know. They want our women to hate themselves to the point where they put spend billions of dollars on hair weave to look like that. Hello. Right there. Skin bleaching is going crazy in the Caribbean right. and things of that nature. Why? Because our people hate the way they look. The, the most extreme, the most extreme picture is Michael Jackson. Read, give me, give me the image of Mosai God real quick. Look what happened to Michael Jackson. The dude changed himself from a, a black man with a, with a broad nose and woolly hair to a, someone with stringy hair, a white complexion, a thin nose, and white skin. Right. What is that? That's self-hatred. And that image right there that's given to us in church, that false image is the reasoning behind it. Bring it it's the reason why our dark brown skinned brothers and sisters don't look at themselves as beautiful. Read that. Give me the most side, man. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Bring it out. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. said the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is the Most High God. Oh, He's right. before all days. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. Go ahead. And the hair of his head. The what? The hair of his head. Guess what, Timothy? The hair of the Most High God's hair. Let's read that. Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. We were created in God's image. So what does that make the most high God? Who has woolly hair on this earth today? 
the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You That's are right. the Israelites according to the Bible. That's, That's right. right. You understand that? Let me ask you a question now, brother. No, look at what is your nationality, man? What's your nationality? Let me show you my nationality. No, sir. What is your nationality? What's my nationality, bro? I'm reading your culture right here, right? I love it. Mm -hmm. I can't lie. You came as a young black man that came up on my ship. Okay. You talk about all that, but anyway, I like your courts. That's all I can really grill. That I feel like what y'all are reverent for, I hate to look at your courts for. Give me I, Psalms 82. I'm going to show you something oh, heavy oh, about oh, our people. Oh, I'm going to show you something heavy about our people because right now, Brother Timothy, I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a, a so-called black man that doesn't know who he is and that needs to understand who he is to know what he fell from. Read. Psalm chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are God. Most high God said that the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men are God. There's supposed to be rules on this earth, Brother Timothy. That's right. You understand that? That's what we're looking at today. When we see our so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men walk around in these communities here, right. selling dope, drunk and high out of their minds on early in the morning. You understand that? Not taking care of their children. That's what we see. We. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Go ahead. But ye shall die like men. Right now, we're looking at the gods that's supposed to be on this earth as dead men. We're looking at the gods that's supposed to be on this earth as dead men. You're dead to the truth about who you are and what you're supposed to be doing on this earth today, brother. You know, you understand that? Our people are asleep. I'll give you Hosea 4 and 6. Our people are completely destroyed as a people to the point where they rather call themselves black, a color in a crayon box, or call themselves African American after the lineage of two so-called white men. Our people want to, want to sit there and vote for a government that was set up to keep you in slavery and oppressed. Right. Right. This is the thing that is pushing our community and it's madness. Read. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Go ahead. Yeah. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Most like God says that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Read. Because thou has rejected knowledge here's the thing you're going to find out timothy i'm gonna deal with you in a second because god's people has rejected knowledge go ahead i will also reject thee the most High god has rejected us as a people now what is that knowledge that our people are rejected go ahead give me that malachi 2. what happened you want that picture we're going to explain that picture to you no we're going to because your history is in the bible read Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. This is the knowledge that our people are destroyed for not following. This is the knowledge that our people reject today. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. It says your priest's lips, they should keep knowledge. Read. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Should, that knowledge that our people fall from is what's told to our people that is done away with in the Christian church. God's laws, statutes, and commandments. We ought to keep that thing. Go back to Hosea 4. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Let me go yeah. with this picture here. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Go ahead. Because thou has rejected knowledge. Our people reject God's laws. Go ahead. I will also reject thee. The most high God has rejected us. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. That thou shalt be no priest unto me. You got to understand, to be a priest of the most high God, is one of the highest positions that you can have on this earth. Right. right. And the Most High God said, ye are gods, but you shall die like men. You're not going to be priests of the Most High God. Right. Because we reject God's law, statutes, and commandments. Now let's deal with this picture because your question should be, how do we know that we, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American people on this earth today are the Israelites? Right. We know that based off of the prophecies written in this Bible here. You know? And we're going to get right to it. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Because the brother got, he said he likes this picture right here. I like Wh that one. Which one? Right. You like that one there? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Yeah. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee 
and overtake thee. Understand something, brother. I love that. Our people are I suffering under the curse of the Most High God because we do not keep his laws, statutes, and right commandments. Right. Right. You understand that? Let's deal with that picture right man. there. Um, so, give me, um, let's get straight to it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He said, The Lord shall bring the Israelites into Egypt again with ships. So the question is, what is Egypt? Because we did not go back into the landmass of Egypt. So what is the Most High God talking about when he says he's going to send you into Egypt again with ships? Read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Bring it out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. out of the house of bondage. Out of the what? House of bondage. Let me ask you a question. Now, what is bondage? What is bondage? Slavery. The word bondage means slavery. It's synonymous with slavery, right? Get back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68, which you're going to find out so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man and woman is that your history is in this Bible. Right. Your past is in this Bible. Right. Your present time is in this Bible. Right. Your future right. is in this Bible. That's right. It's written. Bring it out. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh-huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Shall bring you into slavery again with ships. With what? With Shit. Now we got to ask all the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans, what nation of people went into slavery on cargo slave ships? Sis, I like it. what people went into slavery on slave ships? Our people did, right? Sis with the camera. What people went into slavery on slave ships? Our people did, right? So read it again from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 you know. and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord said he's going to send the Israelites into Egypt again into slavery again on cargo slave ships. Right. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The same way Moses said it's going to happen. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. We will not see our homeland again. So what is the motherland? What is our homeland? What's our homeland? Africa? Is our home? What's the what's the motherland? What's our homeland, our brother? Home is Africa. It's Africa, right? Where we come from. What's the motherland, sis? It's where they took Africa. What you're gonna Africa. find out is that you've been taught lies your entire life. Right. You've been taught lies by the same people that actually put this Bible in your hand. They they murdered you if you tried to read and taught you a false doctrine about what is written in this Bible. Yeah. They didn't teach you what was written. Get the motherland. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. We are yeah. the truth to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men and women who are the Israelites today. Right. They don't even know. Read. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Go ahead. Which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the motherland. Jerusalem is where we come from. That is what we're not going to see again. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. you know? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord is going to bring the Israelites into Egypt again with ships. Go ahead. By the way, whereof I spake unto the thee. The same way Moses said it was going to happen. Thou shalt see it no more again. We're not going to see our homeland again. And it's not Africa. It is Jerusalem. Read. And there. In that land that we come over on cargo slave ships. What's going to happen? Ye shall be sold. Ye shall be what? Sold uh -huh. unto your enemies. Here's your picture right here. About people being sold unto our enemies. He didn't say friends. What did he say friends? To your enemies. Unto our enemies. Our people can't even look at the same people that put us into slavery. The same people that oppress us. And not even view them as our enemies. That is madness. All of the, the destruction, the rape, the robbery, the murder that's been done by the hands of these people that hate our guts. And we still classify them as friends. We still want to be their friends. The most high God's wisdom is better than ours, though. The most high God says that these same people are our what? And to your enemies. The people that we were sold to as slaves are our enemies. That's must know your enemy in order to come out of the condition that you're in. Right. Read. 
and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. There's no other people on this planet that came over to a country on cargo slave ships and was sold for slave men and slave women but the Israelites. Right. right. Which is the right. so-called black Hispanics and Native American. You are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. right. Finish that off. And no man shall buy you. And no uh, man is going to redeem us. That's the foolishness. Say it one more time. But yeah, you know what? Read it say again. It and time, say it again. And no man uh, shall buy you. And no man is going to redeem us out of this captivity. I love it. All week, this week, all you hear is November 6th. You need to vote. You better know what that means. Our people follow Martin Luther King. Our people follow Malcolm X. No. Our people follow Desmond Vesey. Right. Sojourner Truth. Harriet Tubman. Marcus Garvey. Right. right. And our condition is the same or even worse than it was when, during that time. That's right. right. The scriptures tell you no man is going to redeem us out of this captivity. Right. right. With our people sitting there voting. Is voting going to stop our brothers and sisters from whoring one another out? Is voting going to stop our brothers from selling crack on the corners and killing each other? You got to change your damn mind, knowing that you Israelites. Give me Deuteronomy 10. Because there's something required of you so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? So now he's telling you, what does God require of you? That's the question you should be asking in your Christian church. That's right. What does God require of me? What can I do so I can get, I can be in good grace with God and get out of the predicament that I'm in? Amen. Not no damn preacher telling you to vote. None of that. That's madness. Real. Read. Real man. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. Our people must fear the Lord thy God. We must get some type of fear in God. What is the fear of God? Psalms 119, 120. Because we hear a lot. I'm a God-fearing person. Me too. I want a God-fearing man. I'm a God-fearing woman. How the hell you fear God and you doing everything against God? Right. You got the You know. You have no knowledge and understanding. That's why we're here today, though, to bring this word out as it is written. Psalms chapter 119, verse 120. This is the fear of God. Read. My flesh trembleth for the fear of thee. He says, "My King David said, my flesh trembleth for the fear of thee, Lord. Read. And I am afraid of thy judgment. I'm afraid of what? Thy judgment. He is afraid of the judgment that's going to come to him if he does not do what God commands us to do. That's right. Amen. That is the fear of God. You're a God-fearing person when you say, hey, God tells me not to do this or else this is going to happen to me. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to deal with the judgment that God is going to bring to me. Right. right. That's how you fear God. Deuteronomy 10 and 12 again. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Go ahead. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God. But to fear God, go ahead. To walk in all his ways. He must walk in the ways of God. Read. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God uh -huh. with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Go ahead. To Amen. keep the commandments of the Lord. We are to keep the commandments of the Lord. That's right. And, and his statutes. And his statutes. Right. That's what's required of the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native American men. Right. Right. Women and children. These laws were not given to anybody else. Give me that. Right. So this word unto Jacob. These laws were not given to anybody else but you. Right. This Bible is a record that was created by your forefathers for you in these days. Right. Right. They took our Bible. Because they knew that the secrets to our demise and their reign is in this book here. Right. Right. Keep as far from God's laws as possible. Because they know that if we stay away from God's laws, guess what? They can have dominion over us. Right. They know that thing. That's why they ain't teach you this stuff. Read. Psalm chapter 147, verse 19. Yeah. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showed his words unto Jacob. Read. His statutes and his judgments. Unto Israel. So the statutes and his judgments, the things that we just read, was required of the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native American men to Israel. Read, here's the point. 
He have not dealt so with any nation. No, he dealt with all the other nations. Oh, no. He have not dealt so with any nation. Says he has oh. not dealt so like with any nation. This Bible is your book right. and no one else's book. Right. Right. You understand that? Read. And as for his judgment, and as for his judgments, the things that we're supposed to be afraid of, read. They have not known them. The mother, the mother nations didn't know God's judgments. Right. They're like lawless that. people. Like the Bible that. calls them bastards. Right. You understand that? So let's let's deal with the state of our people here, and let's deal with that shirt you got on, brother. You got a shirt of a woman dressed yeah. scanty. And she, you can say she's naked, right? It got bought to. Me. It got yeah, bought to oh, you, right? Oh, oh. oh. Well, no, I'm just asking you a question, because I'm going to show you this is the problem with our community. Go ahead. I'm listen. So let's deal with it. Let's, get, let's, let's see what is one of the issues in our community. We live this every day. We got what? Single parent households? Speak your mind. We got teenage parents? I stay by myself. We got HIV and AIDS running rampant in our community? Why is that? It's because of whoredom. It's because we don't have God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Give me Exodus. You know, 22 and 16. I, 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 I tell you everything we can blame the white man all we want, but guess what? The white man, after we tell you these laws, the white man ain't got nothing to do with you keeping them. Right. right. Watch this here. 22 verse 16. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid. If a man entice a maid. Read. That is not betrothed. That is not um, promised to marriage to any other person. Read. And lie with her. If that brother sleeps with that woman, he shall surely endow her. To be his wife. That woman that you sleep with is supposed to be your wife. Right. According to God's laws. That's right. What's wrong with that law now? Tell me how that law is hard. Get Psalms 19. Um, the law of the Lord is perfect. Tell me what's wrong with that law there. And tell me if us keeping that law will help it. I buy clothes and everybody buy me clothes. If that, if that brother that you sleep with. And you're a single woman, a young woman, a marriage your age. No man. If you, if, no, I'm, said, not I'm talking to the sister behind you. If that brother that you sleep with says, hey, I'm going to sleep with you and make you my wife. You're the only woman that I'm going to sleep with for the rest of my life. And I'm the only man that you're going to sleep with for the rest of your life. And we're going to come together under the grace of God. How would that fix our community? It'll, it'll fix it. Wholeheartedly. It'll stop all the damn hoarding that's going on if we keep God's laws. But what we're looking at, the result of, is the result of our people going against God's laws. God's people are destroyed. We're in a destroyed state now for a lack of God's laws. Read. So, chapter what? Chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. You're going to find out today as we bring these laws out, the laws of God is perfect. There's nothing wrong with God's laws at all. Read. Converting the soul. It is what converts your soul. It is what's able to change you and take you out of the base state that we are in as a people and turn us into the godly people that we're meant to be. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. If you want to be considered a wise person, guess what? You will keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. We're going to stay on this whoredom, though. Give me, um... 19. Leviticus 19. Don't prostitute thy daughters. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28. Yeah, what else is going on? Verse 29. Go ahead. Do not prostitute thy daughter Go ahead. to cause her to be a whore. Now the Most High God said, don't prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Now we know, every time we bring God's laws out, our people don't like to hear that thing. But guess what? You got a 14-year-old daughter. And you put her, and you tell, hey, go ahead and wear your spandex, girl, and get yourself a boyfriend. You allow your daughter to have a boyfriend. What are you doing? Read it again. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter. The most like God said, don't prostitute your daughter. He's telling you, don't let your daughter go out there without supervision, sleeping with little boys. But guess what? We all been in high school. We all been in junior high school. And you have boyfriend and girlfriends, and what the hell are they doing? 12, 13 year old, 14 year olds. They touching each other, they kissing each other, they having sex. Right. And most of God says, you're supposed to be guiding your daughter. To not cause her to live a life of water. That's one of God's laws. What? What is wrong with that law? 
that prevent your daughter from coming into your house at the age of 14, 15, and 16 with a baby. God's laws prevents that. Prevents more headache on the parent. Well, what is wrong with that? Give me Timothy 2. Because we're going to deal with uh, that, that shirt there is ridiculous. This is what's going on in our community, though. 2 and 9. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9 We are commanded to bring God's laws to our people So that they can change their minds So that they can start living a godly life To come out of the state that our people are in today That's right Read. In like manner also That women adorn themselves In modest apparel Our women are supposed to be dressed in modesty Not putting on the tightest pair of pants Turn around in the mirror and see if they butt look right in the pants that they're wearing. Right. Why are you wearing tight clothes and dressing immodestly? Because you want to attract these men. That's what's going on here. We're living a life of whoredom as a people. And we're seeing the end results of all that thing. God tells our women to do what? In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Our women want to be respected. Our women don't want to be, be whistled at and treated like a hoe. But when you walk past with your behind out, with your breast showing, or dressed like that woman on my man's shirt right there, how the hell do you expect a man to treat you? The first thing he's going to do is, you walk past him, you walk it up to him. When you take five steps past that brother, hey brother, you know what I'm talking about. When that woman with that tight clothes come out, and she's walking up to you, and when she walks, take five steps behind you, what are you doing? You turn her right around and look at her behind. Right, right around looking at her behind. If her behind looks good enough to you, what are you going to do? You're going to turn, hey, 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 shorty, let me talk to you for a second. Let me holler at you real quick, shorty. Let me get your number. Call you sometime. That leads to a life of whoredom. Read. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Our women are supposed to adorn themselves in modesty. You wear a dress down to from your below your knees and down. You wear that thing that is not snug to your body. Because you want to attract the man that's gonna view you as that righteous woman that you want to be treated as. Right. You want to be called a wife, not a baby mama. Right. Or not a girlfriend. Right. Our women want that thing. Well, God is telling you how you can gain that. Have some respect for yourself. Right. Parents, teach your children not to live that life of order. That's right. You got a young son, guess what? Tell him, look, boy, you, you lie down with that girl, you're going to marry her. Right. I don't want to hear you going around sowing your royal oats. Right. You're going to tell your daughter, hey, hey, ain't no dating. You ain't dating nobody in high school. You're not going out on no dates. You're not wearing those tight pants out of my damn house. Our parents have to take control of their households now. Right. Take control of their children. Because what we see now is ridiculous. Women selling their bodies now for money. That all starts from a very young age of dressing immodestly, being taught to damn sleep with boys. And it's being accepted. Give me um, Matthew. Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Go ahead. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. People say that Christ did away with the laws. But the scriptures tell you that he's going to magnify the laws. Let's see how Christ magnified the law of adultery. Sleeping, sleeping around on each other. Read. But I say unto you. But Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, says unto you what? That whosoever looketh on a woman. Hey, brother, we talked to you about what you do when that woman went past. You was like, I'm going to look like this, right? He said, Christ tell you whosoever looketh upon a woman to do what? To lust after her. To lust after her. To lust after that woman. What happens? Hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. You've already committed adultery with that woman already in your heart. Right. That's what Jesus Christ says. But they tell us God's laws are done away with. Let's get another law real quick. Give me, give me, give me the one that causes the most problems when we come out. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Bring it out. What you're going to find out is the law of the Lord is perfect, 
and it's here to convert the souls of the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men and women. That's right. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God now is talking about cross-dressing. He's telling our women that you're not supposed to wear the things that pertain unto a man. Right. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on women's apparel. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Says every single person that cross-dresses are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right. Look at our young little sisters. Every single one of their pants is tight. And they're not even supposed to be wearing pants. Right. Some of them look like right. underwear. Right. This is what we're allowing our young girls to do. And it invokes a pedophilia, a pedophile spirit in these men out here. Right. What the hell you think going on with these men high out of their minds? Drunk out of their minds early in the morning. Right. And they see a little girl with tight pants, a little young girl, eight, nine, ten years old. Right. And you wonder why that girl has been touched at a young age. Right. They ain't supposed to be out here with no supervision at all. Read it from the top again. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. But what are women wearing today that pertains unto a man that God says they're not supposed to wear? What about you, sis? What does God... Hey, pants, right? Pants. Our women... Pants... Pants was not even created for women. Our women fought for the right to wear pants. It wasn't meant for them. But they wanted to wear pants. Why? Because they wanted to be equal unto a man. I can do whatever a man can do. God tells us to come back to your true heritage and nationality. You're not supposed to wear pants. You got some? Read it. Even a man. Even a man. Let's finish it up. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So guess what? Our women are not supposed to be wearing pants in the first place. God tells us that that thing is an abomination. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What are they pushing now in society? Men wearing dresses. You got your rappers wearing skirts. Wearing lingerie. Doing all time. It's to the point you can't even. I don't even know what the hell they doing. Bring it on. Right. You got men wearing high heel pumps. Right. Wearing man bags. Right. Dressed like women. Right. And these dudes are some of your gangsters out there now. Right. Look it up. These are your gangsters. These are your rappers. Right. These are the men that's supposed to be men in your community. Right. Dressed like women. Right. Read. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the same way we look at a man in a dress. And he's an abomination. He looks crazy. That's the same way God and we look at our women wearing pants. Right. It's an abomination unto God. That's right. How does God feel about abomination? Sirach 15. Let's see how God feels about that thing. Because we can come out here and preach all day. Hopefully this word strikes somebody and forces you to read that thing and try to change your life. Right. It's not going to happen to everyone. Right. right. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 13. Yeah. The Lord hateth all abomination. God does what? The Lord hateth all abomination. The Most High God hates all abomination. So guess what? Our women wearing pants and our men wearing skirts and dresses and being effeminate, God hates that thing. That's, That's what it. And they that fear God, they that do what? Fear God. They that fear the judgment that's going to come for cross-dressing, read. Love it not. They do not love that thing. You know. They don't love to buy the newest pair of jeans and, and make sure that it's snug on them. They don't love that thing. They do not love abomination. There is a judgment for our women and men dressing out of order. Give me that in Zephaniah. So that we can, we can show you what, what a person that's God-fearing would do. Read. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8 Bring it out. And it shall come to pass Go ahead. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice Go ahead. That I will punish He will do what? I will punish He will do what? I will punish Go ahead. The princes uh -huh. And the king's children That does what? And all such That are clothed 
with strange apparel. There is a punishment for not dressing according to God's dress code. That's hey, right. You will be put to death when Christ returns. That's right. right. You understand that? Breaking news tonight. There has been a staggering number of black and Latino A 12 year old black boy was shot and area. killed outside. A young black a woman was arrested for a traffic police. violation. A black was man found was shot and killed in the car. Just With three days after the, the police had placed her. The aftermath was aired live on Facebook. 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 Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. <gasps> Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up, Israel. Wake up. Wake up. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.